Does mindset matter when you're looking for a job? Today, we're going to discuss why your beliefs matter. Be careful for what you ask for, for you surely shall get it. <laughs> this is what my mom always said. How are you doing this week? This week, I'm going to explore how your mindset and beliefs impact your outcomes in a job search. I'm, I'm going to talk about this because I've been in touch this week with many people who are struggling right now to stay positive in their search for a job. Is this you? I'm going to talk about what this means to people who have um, unclear beliefs and what they believe. They don't know what they believe. And I'm going to address this issue and what it means to those who do have a firm belief in God. So which are you? Are you a believer or do you not know exactly where you stand? If you don't know where you stand, I suspect you do understand the, the significance of science and the impact of psychology. Science and psychology supports that we are often right no matter what we believe. That if we believe we can, we can. That if we believe we can't, we can't. Either way, you're right. We are a victim or a victor of thoughts that originate in our own minds. So stop for a moment and think about what you've been thinking about as it relates to your job search. Do you spend hours worrying? Are you struggling with fear, uncertainty, and doubt? If this is you, I want to assure you that it is not a normal state of mind to harbor such thoughts. In fact, the definition of worry, according to Webster Dictionary, is to feel uneasy or troubled, to feel anxious or distressed, it is a source of nagging concern to torment oneself with nagging thoughts. Does this sound like the mindset that you're trying to overcome as it relates to the job search? If this is you, I want to encourage you to find support. So, what does support look like for your thoughts? You need to find resources that address the source of your pain. If you feel unconfident professionally or personally, I encourage you to do mental exercises to practice going back to your most confident self. It's simple. So indulge me right now. Just close your eyes and go to a time in your mind where you've been happy, confident, and professionally satisfied. So where are you? Why do you feel so happy, confident, and satisfied? Feel that feeling and the sensation of being confident. Now open your eyes. I want you to practice this confidence when worry sets in, and I want you to redirect your focus. Since the brain can only focus typically on one thing at a time, when you change your focus, it cuts the power source to the worry. Also, I encourage you to find a person that you can talk to openly and candidly about these worries. This could be a mental health professional, a life coach, or just a personal friend that seems wise. They can help you put into perspective your worries. And finally, ask yourself, how many times have you been right about the worst thing that you worry about? 99.9% .9 of the time, we stress over things that never happen. So I'd like you to use statistics to comfort yourself. So what should you do if you are a believer and are still struggling with worry, anxiety, fear, and doubt? If this is you, I'm so glad you're here. I have excellent resources for you too. I'd like to invite you to join us on Thursday nights at 6.30 till 8 o'clock central for a time of prayer and community with people who will listen to you. If you don't know what you believe, you're also invited to this time of community because just listening to other people talk about their experiences and verbalize how they feel, it very much validates how you feel and makes you know you are not alone. Also, when you realize you're not alone, it is very comforting. In a world that is plagued by division and isolation, this call that's weekly and free is a fantastic source of strength. Another resource that I think could be really helpful to you is a best-selling number one New York Times book called The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. I personally cannot recommend this book enough. It squarely addresses the sources of fear, uncertainty, and doubt 
and provides to you a clear framework on how to change. This book personally changed my life, so my hopes are that you will check it out. Finally, I'd like you to audit yourself for the sources of worry in your life. Is it possible that you're angry about the end of your job? Did you leave a toxic job situation? Is it possible that you harbor unforgiveness? The Bible tells us in Mark 5 that if we have anything against anyone, we are to forgive them first before we pray, and that if we won't forgive another person, God won't forgive us. Right now, too many people in the world are angry at each other, and I believe this is hindering the effectiveness of our prayer. I see in people all the time the spiritual side effects of anger, shame, and guilt. And while they know they need help, they are struggling to address the root issues, which often are seated in unforgiveness. So how do you address root issues? First of all, you need to recognize that it takes time. It took time to get to the place where you're at. It often takes a while to get away from toxic thinking. So how do you start? You need to find a safe place with safe people in an environment of confidentiality where you can share your story, where you can ask for help and engage with others and hear their story. In doing so, you start to understand you're not alone. You also understand that God is with you even when you don't feel it, and there's hope that this too shall pass. I encourage you to pray or meditate without ceasing. We do this weekly, and your small group could support you in this effort daily. In conclusion, do not ignore toxic thinking. It does impact your energy levels, your expectations of yourself and others, and your ability to put forward your best self in an interview situation. You need to take action. You need to ask for help, seek medical consultation if you're struggling with depression or insomnia, and find that friend or that prayer group or just a group of people that you can confidentially engage with so that you can disclose how you feel and share that burden with other people. Finally, just take care of yourself. Exercise is, has been shown to be very helpful in treating depression. Sunlight and vitamin D are critical if you're struggling with the winter blues. And just take time for small pleasures. I was consulting with a gentleman this week who told me that for the last six months, all that he's done for about 12 hours a day is look for a job. And he's just exhausted and burnt out. I asked him, I said, when was the last time you took your wife out to dinner? When was the last time you had quality, focused time with your family? And he said, it's been a long, long time. I said to him, you need to take off 24 to 72 hours. You need to take two to three days off, check your email, voicemail a couple times a day, but otherwise unplug. You need to go to a place where you can connect with nature. And there are many free environments, whether it's walking through a park. We have here, um, where I live in Kansas City, we have um, a wonderful plant store that is full of tropical varietals. They have cactuses, they have a huge koi pond, they have even a coffee shop inside where you can sit in an isolated booth, drink your coffee, enjoy the surroundings, and just reset your internal pace. This is what you need. If you're exhausted and you're thinking toxically, please take time for self-care. Nurture your soul. Go to an art museum. Try to do something that gets you out and involved with other people or observing nature in a way that really replenishes your soul. And I'd like to conclude by telling you, you are not alone. At Economy of One, we offer small groups that are designed to teach you how to break away from the 70 to 80% of people that work at a job they don't like. So if you're unemployed, are you coming from a job you don't like, working in an industry you didn't enjoy. If this is you, we have hope for you. You do not have to grind it out for the rest of eternity in a job you don't like. We would like to get you completely reoriented in your thinking to go create the opportunity that you deserve. In this process, I will team you with five to seven other people that become your financial, personal, highly committed first responders. These are people who are committed to you. Often you don't know who they are. They come from completely different walks of life. This diversity of people 
a small group that comes together, they go through a 10 step process that helps you identify your definition of success, what you're really looking for, the story of you, and clear strategies that you can use to go to market to find companies that need what it is you have to offer, whether you're looking for full-time employment, a gig type opportunity, or are thinking about launching a small business. We also offer our workbook on Amazon. This is the economy of one creating an opportunity instead of chasing jobs. I wrote this with Frank Benura. It is the basis of the 10 step process that we use in our small groups. If you are interested in becoming a member of that small group, go to our website, go to the bottom of the homepage and sign up for our newsletter at economyofone.com. Also, just tell us you're interested. Ask for more information. I would love to set a time to talk to you via Zoom to see if this might be a fit for you. If you need a whole new approach, come and join us. We're going to go after all of the things that we know you need. We know you need community. We know you need support. We know you need a whole new way to recalibrate yourself to accept opportunity and what I believe God has planned for you in your life. This is Elizabeth Allen for the Economy of One channel. If you're enjoying this, please subscribe. We need your help. Thank you so very much.